Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about insulin resistance, potassium, and blood pressure. Out of all the nutrients that you need, potassium is something needed in very large quantities. You need 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. Now, what does that mean with food? It means that hardly anyone is getting their potassium because you would need 7 to 10 cups of vegetables every single day. Okay, so how many cups of vegetables do you consume in a given day? Maybe five, maybe less, but I, I, I do it because I, I feel so much different. But here's the thing, we need four times as much potassium as we do sodium, okay? Most people consume four times as much sodium as they do potassium, they have a lot of fluid retention. So they both work together in relationship to fluids and hydration. But we need, in, if you look at vegetable content, it's always heavy on the potassium and very low on the sodium. Okay? But if you're doing like chips and salty things, that's going to that's gonna throw this whole thing off. So what happens when you have low potassium is you get high blood pressure. Potassium is a physiological relaxer. It calms the nervous system. It actually softens the arteries. It actually can prevent strokes. It's very, very healthy. Healthy mineral. And uh, so it can also prevent constipation. It also can prevent leg cramps. So it's involved in nerve conductivity and muscle contraction and relaxation. So with a problem with potassium, you can have a lot of cramps, tightness, and tension in your body, and you can also have a lot of um, electrical problems with your heart, arrhythmias, atrial fib. That's all potassium deficiency because people don't consume enough. So let's pretend that you're, you have high blood pressure and you have to take a diuretic, thiazide, well, what that does is it gets rid of fluid. Well, it does, it also gets rid of potassium. So what happens when you take this diuretic to fix your high blood pressure, you lose more potassium, raising the blood pressure more. So now you need another medication. And then you're told to drink more water, which dilutes the electrolytes more, especially potassium, and your blood pressure goes higher because more water is not going to hydrate you. It's going to get rid of the electrolytes that you have, potassium specifically, and you don't get the hydration you once had. So the whole myth of drinking more water to hydrate you is not quite true. You need the minerals, specifically potassium. That's the one you need in the most amount. Like even magnesium, you need about 420 milligrams, but potassium, you need 4,700. Okay. Now, um, also, if you're salt sensitive, okay, especially with your blood pressure, what that really means is you're potassium deficient. The way to fix people that are salt sensitive is just increase the potassium and they'll do fine. So instead of restricting salt, why don't we just increase potassium? It's a better strategy because it, you need potassium for other things. 98% uh, of all the potassium in your body is inside the cell, not outside the cell. So when you get test, tested from your blood or whatever testing you do, it's very difficult to test a potassium deficiency because it's all inside the cell. And so um, you, might, you might think you have normal levels, but you really don't because you never did an intracellular test for potassium, okay? The other interesting thing about potassium is it takes insulin to control and absorb potassium. If you don't have enough insulin, you can't pull potassium in the cells. So insulin regulates potassium. Now, how does that relate to a pre-diabetic, someone that has insulin resistance or a diabetic? Well, if they have insulin resistance, they're gonna have, the cells are gonna block insulin. So guess what's gonna happen to the potassium? They're not gonna have enough potassium. So a lot of times when you have a pre-diabetic or uh, like even a diabetic state, they have a huge, huge deficiency of potassium. And one of the things I make sure that they do is greatly increase the vegetable content to increase the potassium to help uh, balance this thing out because there's gonna have, you're going to have so many side effects from that. So if you actually add more potassium, you can decrease the need for insulin. So that's a really cool relationship. I just wanted to touch on the relationship between these, two, uh, two, these three items right here. And if you have blood pressure, start increasing your vegetables. And if you like this kind of information, if you like learning about nutrition, if, if you find it interesting, 
I have a health coaching training program that you might be interested in learning about where we teach you a lot more about nutrition and how the body works. So if you want to apply to the scholarship that I have, click the link below, check it out, study it, and maybe you can be a health coach as well. Thanks for watching.